Hi folks, and welcome back to Fisherman Den. Uh, the other day I was walking around a local pond and I found a, a couple of guys that were fishing away. They obviously hadn't been doing it very long and they caught a carp and then they managed to um, make a total mess of landing it. So I thought, well, most people who have been doing it for a while obviously know how to land a fish, or do they? So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all the things I've seen done wrong over the years. There's probably a few I've missed out as well, but these are the main ones I've seen. Oh, by the way, <laughs> this might look a bit funny, and uh, it is kind of intended to be, uh, but it's not really at the expense of those people who are doing it wrong, it's really at my expense to show me doing it wrong and the mess you can get into. Okay, so we've got our first fish on. And this, this very first one is actually about lack of preparation. You've got this thing ready to go, or you think you have, and now you're thinking, well, I've got to land it. So you look around for your landing net and you think, ah, no, <laughs> it's down there, it's not even been set up. So now you're in a bit of a quandary. What do you do? Well, you're kind of stuck because you're not going to be able to drag a, a fish in like this without breaking the line or causing damage to the fish. And you're basically in a bit of a hole at this point. Now this isn't a massive fish, but at this point, and I've got to try and watch my cable here, I've got to somehow try and get up, grab the landing net and the handle, preferably not with my cable there, try and fleet, catch the fish at the same time, try not to fall in. Now I could put the anti-reverse on and try and do that and hopefully now I can get the, the thing put together without being snapped off. This is a right performance, isn't it? Okay, so at this point, I'm not even gonna put the end on there. I'm gonna just use two sections. This is not the way to be doing things, guys, but this is what I've seen so many times. Now, if this was a bigger fish, I could easily have been snapped off by now. Okay, right. So, whew, put that down, get to the anti-reverse off, and that hopefully is now ready to come in. And sometimes of course you lose the fish. This time I got lucky. And it's a, a reasonable fish, probably about three pounds or so. Okay, we got lucky that time. Okay, so this time then, again, this is a lack of preparation uh, one. We've got the fish coming in down below us. There he is down there. Let's have a look at him. Oh yeah, decent little fish. And you're thinking, right, well, I'll net him. But this time, again, you've forgotten to do something you've left the net behind you. So now you're stuck on this, uh, well, you could be on a platform. I'm actually in the middle of a, a pile of mud. But now, again, we've got to somehow try and get the landing net, keep pressure on the fish. And especially if you've got a, a barbless hook on, which in the UK, obviously, you tend to have to do most of the time now, especially if you're on a commercial. You've got to go and get your net, try not to fall in, make sure you don't get any slack line and then you're ready to start netting. But of course, you could easily have lost this fish just by doing this. So again, always, always just make sure that you've got your net to hand when you're ready to get one in. So let's just get this one in a bit, have a look at him. Not quite ready yet. And he's in. Right, so this one, just mind my cable again. Must get a wireless microphone. This one's probably about five pounds, and it's just hooked literally right in the, the lip. Nice little fish, not huge, but nice and chunky. So that'll do nicely for number two. So how do you have your landing net set up? Well. 
there's a number of ways to do it. It has to be accessible. You have to be able to reach down to it and just grab it with the rod in the other hand. Has to be on the side opposite to the rod like mine. I'm left-handed, so it's on the right side. Obviously, if you're right-handed, it'll go on the left. Now, a lot of people have theirs down in this area here, so they can just grab it. I find that sometimes that just gets in the way of my knee. I've seen other people just lie it over the top of the middle of the thing, uh, the, the tray here, but I've made a little crook for mine, so it sits there. So I can catch the fish, grab it, and land it. And of course, all you do is you're doing that to get the thing out. So that's number two. Number three, and this one isn't necessarily um, doing it wrong. Uh, sometimes you may have to do this, and all it is, obviously, landing net handles these days, this is 3.3 metres, and the average is probably about 3 metres. So if you lay it out alongside you there, um, if you try and lift it up just with your wrist, it's almost impossible to do. You can do it with your elbow and wrist, but it's again unwieldy and it just makes it more difficult. So it's easier to have it with the, the net forward and the pole sticking out behind you or the handle. Now the time you don't do that is if you're fishing on a canal and the towpath is literally, there's the canal, towpath is probably three feet or a metre behind you, you've got people walking along, you've got cyclists, recipe for disaster. Broken um, landing net handle, um, the broken cyclists and the odd trip up from the, um, the passers-by. So that's when you wouldn't have it um, sticking out behind you there and you would stick it out to the side. So as I say, not necessarily a mistake, just makes things awkward for you. So this time then, this is what you see with pretty much absolute beginners and you've got a fish on and instead of just doing what I'm doing, which is to allow it to play itself, they kind of wind and wind and wind and they get to this point and then they think, okay, and then I'll, I'll just uh, get the net and they're bending the rod and there's all sorts of things going on and they're trying to bully it in and then they do this and it's, I literally don't want to go any further than this because this is obviously going to break something if I do that but that's what you see happening all the time people trying to bully fish in before they're ready and as you can see that's a good bend in my rod already so I'll just ease off a bit and go back to where I was Now, uh, in addition to that sort of trying to bully them in sort of thing, the other thing I tend to see is even when they've got the thing ready, and this one's probably between three and five pounds, I'll just allow it to play itself out a bit. Again, beginners may well not allow them to play themselves out, but I'm going to so I can show you the next thing. And it's going to take us a few seconds because this one's Got plenty of fight in him. Yeah, he's still going, this guy. Okay, yeah, it's a decent fish, this. So now, you've got to the point where he's getting tired and you, you're desperate to get the fish in. I know you are because it's exciting when you're doing this sort of thing. Okay, so next thing you see is it's just about ready and then people put their net in and they, they don't actually put the net into the water. They actually got it up here somehow and they're trying to lift it and that's never going to work, is it? I've actually caught around his dorsal fin there, but never try and uh, land a fish without the net being sunk in the water, as you saw me do eventually there. This is a nice fish. Now this one's a classic. This is the one you see on the TV in all the outtakes and the bloopers where someone's trying to get the, the big fish in and isn't going to manage it. And what happens is, even if it's ready to be netted, they wind the float right up to the end of the rod top, like this. Not quite ready yet, obviously. So they wind it up to that, and then they'll put the anti-reverse on, like that. This is the dangerous time now. My clutch is set reasonably well, so I'm not too badly off, but you can see that this is a recipe for disaster. They've got a fairly short landing net, and I've taken the handle off this one, so it's a bit shorter. And now, because they've wound it right up to the, the top, they're either gonna have a lunge, which breaks the 
hook length off because you've got the anti-reverse on or you're going to just struggle. Now this fish is still trying to do its best but this is exactly what you see on those outtakes on the TV and then they try and get it over the net and of course there's no way because it doesn't quite reach long. <laughs> so what you have to do release the line let's a bit more out now you have the chance to bring it back towards you and even with a shortish landing net you can get it in the net now sometimes you do see net handles which are only literally that long so can you imagine how difficult this would have been if we'd have been trying to do it just with with that you can do it it's just that you have to let enough line out to enable you to get the fish to come back towards you classic eh okay so I've shown you all the mistakes that uh, I've seen people make and now let's show you how to do it properly uh, got the landing net to hand just here all made up ready to go the fish is almost ready to be landed it's just under my feet just down here reasonable fish now in order to be able to land it I need to allow enough line out on the top of the rod there so I can just tip the rod backwards when it gets close enough just uh, no it's not quite ready yet it's off down to the right there and the amount of line I've got out is probably just a little bit more than the length of the rod but you can only really do this by experience so that's just I actually thought this one was ready by the way and it's uh, taking its time but as I've said always take your time too there's no reason to thrash at it okay so we're now hopefully getting to the point where the thing is tired enough for me to land it's fighting well this one right so I've got a good bend in the rod but not too much I'm not putting any massive amount of pressure on even though the rod is bent over like that and I'm just giving line to the fish as it lunges and if necessary I'll backwind or let the clutch do its job so it's getting there now and got enough line out oh come on out of the way right so here it comes got enough line out to be able to move the rod backwards at the tip so I can pull the fish in don't thrash at it as I've said before and just bring it over the net and in and it's as simple as that guys well guys I hope you enjoyed that um, as you saw exactly as I uh, explained at the start um, I did demonstrate how not to do it and I think I did it in a very ungainly and uh, incompetent way but it <laughs> hopefully got the message across to to show people what you're doing wrong and if you had a bit of a laugh at me well that, that's fine you may actually if you've been doing this for a while think to yourself well why wait until you've got the fish right down here and it, it's played out properly um, why not just um, put the the landing net right out in the water and just scoop it out like the match anglers do well a couple of reasons for that uh, firstly match anglers have been doing it for a long time and they, they tend to get it right most of the time but again they could also lose fish by thrashing away trying to scoop the thing out from all over the place if you're a beginner that's not a good thing to be doing and the second point is why rush I mean you're here to have a pleasure day and if that means that you take an extra 10 or 20 seconds or so to get the fish in and then land it safely well for me that's the way to do it so there you go that's another one in the can Mr Cecil B DeMille I uh, hope you enjoyed it if you did as always click the like button if you want to subscribe you can do that too and until the next time bye for now <laughs>